everybody. Thanks for coming out tonight. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, the Angry Ocean Project and the invasion begins. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my artwork and where the inspiration comes from and the actual materials. And um, then I'm going to take you on a journey with some of my, my Angry Ocean creatures. So my name is Kathy Abbott. Uh, I started doing this about three years ago, I believe. And one of my biggest inspirations is my dog, Louise, as in, geez, Louise, what have you done now? Um, Louise and I live near the beach. This is, uh, actually, we live right next to this boat ramp over in Beverly, and we go to the beach every day. Uh, if you look in the background there, that yellow house, that's my house. There's Louise. Now I know most people go to the beach and they collect things like beach glass. Beach glass is actually kind of hard to find these days. There's not a whole lot of uh, glass out there. Me, I go out there and I collect trash. Uh, lots and lots of trash. Um, what I do is I follow uh, what's called the rack line, which is that line of seaweed right there. And that's usually the best place for finding the most recent trash. Um, Floatsum is the stuff that kind of floats in on the trash. Um, here's the rack line. And uh, a lot of it is stuff that you may recognize, such as this um, potato chip bag, or this uh, yogurt container, or um, this is a coffee cup, I believe. But then sometimes I'll find things and it's like, hmm, not quite really sure, although this one I think is just an orange straw it became popular a couple of years ago. Now I find a lot of them on the beach. This, I think, is, you know, part of a, uh, a water bottle container. Um, this one, I'm not really sure. You get a little closer. I think it's from some kind of, of kid's candy. A lot of times I'll find plastic bottles such as this. Uh, Sometimes you'll just see the little tip of something, like this little blue straw, and that's what kind of attracts my eye, is that I'll see something, um, a bright color, and I'll go in for it and try to figure it out what it is. But a lot of what I find is stuff like this, something brightly colored, no idea what it is. It's just a small piece of, you know, plastic trash on the beach, and that's the kind of stuff I'll pick up. Sometimes it's really, really big stuff, like this is an entire big uh, barrel here. And sometimes it's really small stuff, like this little orange piece here. Sometimes it's kind of hidden. You have to kind of look around for it. It could be buried in the sand. Uh, some of them are out in the open a little bit more, like this guy here. Um, and sometimes, you know, things can uh, fool you. I'm, I'm looking at this one, wondering what it is. And it's actually not trash at all. It's a jellyfish. Um, and be careful when you're going after those jellyfish because they can sting even after they're dead. Uh, does anybody know what this is? Get any clues? Yes. Sue? Claw is a seagull or something? Say it again. A seagull claw? Or a it's a balloon. It's a p leftover piece of a pop balloon. And that little, you know, it's kind of torn there and that's the little insert piece for it. Um, you might expect this, shoes, find a lot and lots of shoes. We're going to be talking more about shoes later. Lots of shoes on the beach, but you know, I get up some days and there's a TV on there. I don't know why, that's one of my cats enjoying a TV. Um, yeah, it didn't get the channel she liked, so she was leaving. Sometimes I find things we'd rather not find on the beach, such as this, and I, f I find a, a whole lot of these. I found six of them in one day just a couple of weeks ago right on my beach, uh, these, these needles here. Um, in my neighborhood, they do uh, a spring cleanup once a year. All those bags there were from one day of picking up the trash of what was left over from the winter. That was the neighborhood coming together and picking up all the trash. So where does the trash come from? Um, when I find a, something like this, a bottle like this, that's, that's squished down like this. I know it didn't just fall overboard or somebody left it on the beach. When it's been squished down like this, to me that's a sign that it's been run over by a car. 
And probably what happened was that it slipped down into the sewer system. And when the sewer, um, when we have those big, hard driving rains that we've been getting a lot of lately, it's too much for the sewer system to, to handle. The, and they actually open up the gates and all that sewage that's down yeah. there that comes in the streets and everything goes flooding right out to, um, to the ocean. Um, that's my dog Louise. She's, she doesn't like trash in the streets. But so when you see something like this by the curb and you get a little closer, you see the cigarette butt as well. Um, I find a lot of these also, these little uh, nip bottles. Uh, this is all street trash, pampers, stuff. This is where it ends up. It can, those are all small enough to follow into the sewer grates. And like I say, when we have those hard, heavy rains, whew, they open up and then they just uh, come right down to the ocean. So lots of small things fall in. Here uh, I took a walk down, this is in Beverly, walking down to the beach. There's the ocean, looks beautiful, but there's a trash barrel down there and it's kind of over full. And so what happens, of course the wind is going to take some of it and take it right out to the beach. This is the beach up in uh, Gloucester, um, Wingersheek Beach. <laughs> One of Louise's favorite places up on the rock up there. Uh, she loves meeting other dogs up there. And this is actually where I first got the idea to start this project. It was with this right here, this little silver balloon here. I looked at that and said, I can do something with that, which is, I think, the artist's curse. Is, uh, you know, picking up something and thinking you can do something with it. So this is a typical day at the beach for me. I go out, I got a bag, and uh, this is for like a long walk at, long walk at Winger Chic or something, and I'm just filling it up with all kinds of trash and bringing it back. Uh, this one include a, a plunger and um, some styrofoam and so forth. So uh, this past summer, I decided to keep the trash. This is going back to the, the little beach out in Beverly. And I wanted to just keep the trash that I found for um, just for that summer. Not all of it, but a lot of it. Um, and I kept it in this, this box. This is a bait box that I also found on the beach. So to give you an idea of the kind of trash that I found, here is some of it. But here is the bigger part of it, of you know, what I was keeping there for this summer. So here we go. This is, all the, uh, this is just a couple weeks ago I decided to sort the uh, trash that I had picked up. And we got all kinds of stuff here. We've got, um, let me just go back a sec. You can see in the middle there, there's a gloves and, and hat and a yellow hat with a lobster on it. Uh, lots and lots of bottles of all types, some with stuff in it, some with empty. Lots of the nip bottles. I, I, surprisingly, I, I don't find many cans anymore because we have, uh, cans have a deposit on them. Those are very rare. Um, but the water bottles and the uh, sport bottles, they're there all the time. And these little nip bottles are also there all the time. The chair, that was a beach find. Um, all kinds of plastic debris, plastic containers. There's one, there's one in the middle there that's a, um, uh, for worms, <laughs> the blue one there. Uh, all kinds of little bits that I can't really identify, although if you can see in the... In the, um, to the left there, these little round pieces that got, they look like little screens. Those are from the, um, the sewage plant up in New Hampshire. I don't even remember how many years ago they had a problem where they just, um, they released millions of these out into the ocean and they, uh, I'm still finding them to this day, tons and tons of them. They did a big cleanup. They thought they got a lot of them, but I'm still finding them. Uh, fishing gear, uh, there's a lobster buoy, um, uh, you know, boating gear, uh, mooring. Um, this is actually a lot of work gear. There's a brush there, there's a big clip, there's, um, again, a lot of things. These are uh, actually off of a um, lobster trap, and they're the escape hatches for the little baby lobsters to get out of. Uh, Again, more bottles, more bottles than I could ever have anything to do with. 
I can always tell spring at the beach because that's when the balloons start coming out. This is a Spider-Man balloon, um, a happy birthday balloon, the graduation balloons. Those are generally sp spring things. Balls, everybody likes to take, you know, play ball with their, um, with their dog at the beach. Well, those, those balls don't go away. You see the yellow one there? Um, that's like a normal tennis ball, but they, you know, eventually that felt wears off and then that white one is, you know, what's, what's left of it there. And that's still in there. Uh, a television that got thrown out at the beach and uh, just kind of ended up there. Fishing gear, a lot, of, um, a lot of line, a lot of, you know, that kind of stuff. Oh, those are, those are tampon applicators, the pink things down there. Get a lot of those as well. Um, written material, uh, the stuff that's all crumbled up there is, is a Tide calendar and then a bunch of other written material on there. This one is a, I love this, so fine, I guess you can uh, go ahead and call me a foil liquor. Yeah, that's what you want to find. <laughs> uh, lots of plastic kid toys and Tons and tons of kids' toys on the beach. Again, these are the uh, escape hatches from the um, lobster traps. I actually turned those into frames, and they're pretty cool for that. But And uh, this little um, blow-up uh, ball that's still there. So basically, I sort them, take them home, I sort them, I kind of get an idea, of, you know, what do I want to do with all this stuff? And toys and long things like sharpies and so forth. These are, um, these are gunshot shells. An awful lot of those duck hunting season starts around uh, November. And um, so I take this and cell phones, I find cell phones, and turn it into this. And so everything that I do, I, t I take some sort of marine debris and then I, I use something that really should be found at the beach, like this is a, you know, a lobster shell or a crab shell or something like that, and try to create some kind of a creature out of it. So I'll take these, and that was a dog, a dog toy, and then uh, turn it into something like this. And then <laughs> I actually show it in a, in a gallery somewhere. This is the, uh, the Noah Gallery up in Gloucester. So here it is, a piece of a, um, a dartboard and I turn it into this guy here. My little peacock creature. I, a shoe, a clog that I found, and I turn it into another scary looking creature. All these little, little bits of uh, toys that I've got here, um, including this here, went in to make this creature here. And even something like a glove, a big fisherman's glove, um, becomes another type of creature here with the little shells on it. So the idea is, what would happen if, the, if all this trash and all the creatures that are actually living in the ocean kind of melded together and then became something else entirely? Um, this is one of my signature pieces here, which became the... Uh, Welcome to the Angry Ocean Project. Um, that little guy there, he may be recognizable to some kids. That's uh, Scully, Scully from Monsters Incorporated. So, and these are just some of the exhibits I've done. This one was a, a picnic table exhibit and everything that you might normally find at a picnic table from the from the Pepsi bottles to, um, uh, you know, the milk bottles, uh, the, the McDonald's stuff, um, the Blizzard cups, the water bottles, there's Scully again, the Red Solo cup, uh, the squeeze bottle, things for kids, the kids' toys, the sunglasses and the, the sandals, and the little, you know, party straws and so forth, and all the utensils. And there's my little beach guy there guy again. This was another exhibit I did years ago. This was the first one I put together. Um, it took me a long time thinking about the idea to actually making one of these. It took me about a year. I knew what I wanted to do, 
I had the idea in my head, and it actually took until I found the right tool to make it all happen. And it was a particular knife, actually, that said, kind of set it free for me, and then I started making all kinds of things. These are some other creatures. My daughter thinks they should all have names and backstories. So yeah, I'm kind of, kind of working on that, but this one is a mother and baby. And uh, so next I want to go on a uh, little journey here on some of the invasions that these creatures have done. So the idea is basically I take the trash, I put it together with these natural creatures, and then I take them back down to the beach and I stage these invasions of them coming up out of the water as if they're angry and ready to, you know, tell us that they're angry about what we're doing to their oceans. So, um, this one, just so you know, the, this little mouthpiece here, the green piece, that's a baby's pacifier. So I'm just going to uh, go through some of these. This is one of the first invasions that I did with these guys. You can see that this is how old this is. You can see the uh, two towers at the pow uh, Salem Power Plant instead of one that's only there now. So here they go, finding some trash. Coming up and kind of angry about stuff. That was one of the first invasions. Here's another one. Coming up out of the water, the boat ramp invasion. Climbing right up. I love the idea that they've just kind of evolved out of the water, just like, uh, you know, life is supposed to have happened that way. With the birds. Am I going too fast? Is this okay? These, uh, the ones you're looking at now are on my website, theangryoceanproject.com. Um, this one, can you tell what that is? Think about it a minute, you know, kind of recognize it. It's been run over by a car, it was a bottle. Gatorade? Gatorade, big old Gatorade bottle. So here they come up. Um, that brick building right there is actually part of the sewage system, so they're going up to check that out. And see what they can find. Um, this next one is the Creatures Invade a Yacht Club. I showed this uh, to some, some kids one day, this, this presentation, and uh, to my surprise, a lot of them said, what's a yacht club? <laughs> it's a place where people store their, their yachts or boats. So here they are coming up over the dock and uh, ready to go right up the ramp there. They don't care that it says private, they're going right up there for it. So right past the big trash can where trash is supposed to be, but now it all ends up in the ocean and right on to some of the boats. And I'm really kind of glad that nobody from Beverly showed up because I didn't have permission to do this. <laughs> I just went ahead and did it because it looked like it would look good. And hey, it was a Kathy 3, so it's my name, so that was good karma, right? Um, this, this one was also done around the same time. This is the beach in front of my house. And they just kind of on the move, finding, uh, finding some kids' toys, trying to decide what to do about that. Uh, they discovered this wagon here with this poor helpless bunny, <laughs> who they assumed surrounded. <coughs> poor thing. Although my daughter looked at this and she insisted that no, the bunny was the, the, was the king and that they were all kneeling to the king, you know. I kind of saw it differently, that the bunny was a little afraid of what was happening here. Like I say, these are on my website, theangryoceanproject.com. And then actually discovering a person. Gives you the idea of the, the scale of these things too.
Uh, the sewer pipe invasion, that's another old one. Um, I'm right in front of my house there, on the beach. There is this old, old pipe that's pretty broken and um, in bad repair. And it is for when those we have those extra heavy rains as water coming out. In this case, there were creatures coming out. And uh, checking it out to see what was going on. The screamers. Uh, that one out to the right there, that, that tail, that's from a broom, a piece of a broom that I fell out, found on the beach. And again, you can see the boat ramp in the back. So, oop, hello, come in, join us. Um, sometimes I leave them kind of clear and, and put, uh, again, um, some like fishing line or something in there so you can see it. So I wanted, those, are, those were all some of the old invasions that I did when I first started this project. But this summer I got to do some more and some fun ones. And um, hopefully you've heard about the, uh, the, the Strand Beast, which was the, the amazing um, exhibit over at the Peabody Essex Museum. And they did something one day this summer where they took these huge, um, I don't even know how to describe the Strand Beast, beast but they're from uh, this, this European artist, he put together these huge creatures that are very kinetic and they're, uh, you put them on the beach and they move by wind power. And I thought, wow, wouldn't it be cool if the uh, Angry Ocean Project creatures meet the strand beast? So this was up in Crane. Crane Beach, thank you, Crane's Beach. You were there, right? Yeah. It was a big deal. There were tons of people there that day that came out to see the strand beast. That's the two strand beasts that they put on the beach right that day. And you can see, uh, you know, everybody's there ready to take pictures. And you see the, see the drone up in the uh, left-hand corner up there? Um, and they had a great um, logo for the whole thing. It was uh, Release the Beast. So that was pretty cool. Um, and there they are with the, with the sails filled, you know, walking on the beach. So, and that's how they go. They go, just, they just move. Once they get set in motion, they can move on their own. Um, very, very cool stuff, and it was a, you know, a fun day, but there was a big, big crowd. It took forever to, uh, for those of you who were there, it took forever to get out of there that day. Uh, so everybody was looking at the strand beast, but um, not everybody was noticing that some of the, uh, the Angry Ocean Project creatures were there as well, kind of in the background checking things out seeing what was going on. Um, this creature is called Legs, for obvious reasons here. And uh, was there at the uh, Strand Beast thing that day. Those are real, those are real eyes. So, uh, Legs was, was up there trying to figure out what was going on with this big creature here. And then uh, another one showed up. Um, the fellow on the, uh, the left, by the way, is uh, Trevor Smith. He was the um, curator for the Strand Beast exhibit. So, but uh, this other fellow showed up and joined, uh, joined Legs. Uh, that's, that's Grill on the right there. And they were lucky not to get stepped on, but um, I don't know. I don't think they were too impressed with it because the creatures just started moving along. Met up with another one, the, uh, the, uh, the sucker one over there. Almost got stepped on. And then they decided, you know, they were better off without uh, without the crowd, so they kind of walked away. <laughs> Meanwhile, I went out looking for trash, which was not hard to find, uh, and got a Sharpie. 
because who can't use a Sharpie? This next invasion took place in Salem, the Friendship Invasion. You all know the Friendship. Was anybody can tell me anything about the Friendship? <laughs> it's a big replica ship in, in, in uh, Salem. So um, Jim Bean and Smirnoff here um, made their landing in Salem and went right over to the Friendship to you know, to check it out, along with all the other tourists, and to figure out what they were, uh, whether this was a good place to come, come ashore or not. I think of them sometimes as like, you know, the pilgrims looking for that perfect place to land, um, leaning up against the rope here. This, this shot with the one in the background, that's, that's kind of like a photo bomb there from the guy in the back. So this is all in Salem. And okay, so they checked out the tourist stuff and all that, and it started to get dark. And they decided uh, to move on a little bit. Somehow ended up by the bunghole, uh, the liquor store in in Salem on Derby Street and stayed there a lot longer than they should have. <laughs> it got a little dark and uh, from there ended up at the pig's eye down the street <clears throat> and uh, looked totally wasted by the time they were ready to go home for the night but they they had a you know good time checking out the area uh, the next invasion happened in Beverly. This is the Corona invasion. This was definitely a summer, a summer invasion. Uh, there's Kinky Blue. Uh, Kinky Blue, by the way, is made by a little nip bottle, and I didn't know this until I started finding them on the beach, that they actually market nip bottles directly to women right now in pink and blue and fun little colors and such. Uh, I didn't know that. But here's Kinky Blue and um, Kettle, the... Um, behind them there. And they uh, were just kind of serotypically of, uh, there were these two, two young college guys at the, at the beach there and they, Fireball uh, was the leader in this uh, one. And uh, I think five creatures on this little invasion. A little afraid they might get discovered there. And they just went along to see, you know, what was going on. Checking out the Corona. Uh, Kinky Blue's head, by the way, is, is made from one of those party poppers. Oh, watch the sailboat in the background here. I just like doing that. <laughs> So uh, when they were done, they were, you know, a little exhausted from all this. You can see them, you know, taking a break here up against the, cool, the cooler there. And then they actually um, uh, went to check out the cooler itself. And, uh, yeah, he just, he just went a little overboard on that and ended up in there. Hi. Oh, hey. Hi. Come on in. Uh, so the next one up is the Sunday Fun Day invasion, which doesn't really have anything to do with the Sunday Fun Day that happened uh, at the seaport in Salem. But I like the name because uh, this was definitely what weekends at the beach are kind of kind of like, um, after weekends at the beach, I should say. So uh, these two here, Fireball and, um, and Fireworks, um, with their little uh, tank that they're running over here. Um, they showed up on the beach one day, and they found this guy. But actually, you know, you might think he was one of the creatures, but no, they didn't want anything to do with this guy. They were they were a little uh, upset with him, so they just kind of kind of ran him around a bit, and were really gonna just knock him down and go over him. Um, the, the tank that Fireball is uh, running there, if you can tell, the, the, um, the actual cannons are, are made from tampon applicators. 
fun. Fireball, by the way, was one of my first uh, bobblehead creatures, he, which I made from a pen that I found on the beach and the spring from it and everything and made him so he could bobble his head around. Um, so here they are, here's fireworks, meaning some of the, some of the uh, Sunday leftovers on the beach here. All kinds of stuff. And there's Scully again. Um, Digger and uh, the cool guy. Uh, <laughs> this is a, a hand solo, as in a red solo cup. Checking out a little wine nip bottle. Uh, his head, by the way, is made from um, a spider crab. And when they're little, the, the, the crabs are, are very um, textured on the top and they, they attract mud and dirt and sticks and everything, which is part of their camouflage, which keeps them alive when they're little. And they kind of molt in the fall, and that's when I find a lot of their shells. So here's a, a Han Solo and Mr. Cool. Mr. Cool's body there is actually a um, copper tone um, uh, suntan lotion, still full of suntan lotion. <coughs> and checking things out while people are down on the beach with their dogs. This is the kind of stuff that gets me. You find so much little stuff, little, little things. You know, people don't think about it, but all this stuff ends up at the beach and it, it doesn't go away, you know, it just, it's still there. It's going to take forever to get rid of that stuff. Um, these two here, the, the one on the right is, is um, a, little, a little honey guy here, and they're checking out this little bee on the plate. Uh, this guy here, this is General Servo and on the left, and uh, let me see, and this other little guy here. He, this little guy is made from a pill bottle. Here's my, my honey guy again. Uh, that's, his name is actually Major Beware. And uh, a Smirnoff guy. Uh, this is General Servo. I just want to point out what he's made out of. His, his, his body is a, um, a, a plastic can, uh, you know, probably like for an oil, something like that. The legs are, are those spider crab legs, but from definitely from a bigger spider crab. Um, this, the neck piece right here is an asthma inhaler. Uh, the, the beak part is uh, the stub of a Cuban cigar. And the, the two things here, which I consider the eyes, are a little piece of undefinable plastic, and then there's a lobster tail um, for the head. And the, the little piece on the on the, um, right there, a little wing piece is a piece off of a, um, uh, a kid's uh, kind of candy-like drink. It has a little wing shape to it. Those are all the things that get together to make one creature. Uh, there's me. This is a fun day at the beach, and I was actually joined by, by my daughter, Anna, taking pictures down there. So this next one is the, uh, the trash can invasion. This guy here came up out of the, uh, the sewer pipe there, checking it out. It's old, it's broken, all kinds of stuff. Uh, but you can still see there's water underneath in there. And found a, uh, a lobster buoy, used that to shimmy on down and then go out and find you know what's out there in the world. Um, finding more and more, um, you know, outlets like this. This was under a under a parking lot, and the you know the drainage from the parking lot comes right out through one of these pipe holes here. So he's just exploring that, seeing what's in there, and then went all, crept along and finally made it over to this trash can. Check that out. 
This is the kind of stuff that gets washed up on the beach, the, the you know, tick to poison and all that. And I don't know if you could see it right there. There's actually a little lobster there. Not in very good focus, but it's checking that out. And that was the uh, trash can invasion. The next one up is the sunset invasion. Um, condoms and champagne. Yes, I'm going there. Um, so this is around sunset one day, and here's the... Um, that's actually a sneaker with the two little army guys on it. And the, um, the big things at the ends are part of, uh, what are they called? They're not the gunshot shells. They're the, when, they, when you shoot a big gun, I think they're called the wad. And they come out like that. They're plastic. I find a lot of those. And then there's um, this guy here. He's a little different than a lot of the other creatures, and you can see why in a minute. He's a... Uh, the, the back there, those are um, champagne corks, which are plugged into the um, gunshot shells, which is plugged into the, uh, what's the name of that drink? Um, it's kind of like a chocolate drink. Comes in a very distinct container, and I am flipping, I can't quite remember the name. Quick. What is it? Quick? No. You do? No. It's like an Italian thing. No. Um, I'll remember it in the middle of the night, as my mother says. And then on there is a, is a condom. And uh, the front of it is a, um, a shell from a horseshoe crab and then a regular crab on top. But kind of a menacing little creature here. He looks like a beached whale to me up here. And there's General Servo again looking better in that picture. And the three of them together. Um, this next one is called the shoe invasion. And I find a lot of shoes on the beach. Lots and lots of shoes. Um, this is only, this is not even, you know, a summer's worth. This is just the tip of it, really. So I, uh, I brought them down to the beach one day, just the shoes themselves, and I put them out. This is a, a this big cement block is a, is a mooring block. And those are the kind of things, when you see a boat out in the harbor, this is what's holding them down, tethered to the um, harbor. But this one had been moved to the, off a little closer. So I put the, uh, the, uh, shoes out there, seeing if they would attract any creatures. And it got dark, and they started to get dark, and then the creatures started to come up. I checked them out. <laughs> this one you've seen before. I have my favorites. Some of them, you know, are more easier to photograph than others. And this is at night, they're checking out the shoes. So this, uh, this next one is the um, upstream three invasion. And um, some of these creatures you've seen and some of the others, but here they are doing this, this mass uh, beachhead landing and coming upstream. Uh, and, get, and showing a little bit more wear because they've been exposed now to the elements and the salt water and so forth. And here they are um, coming up. This one here, um, those legs are all made out of pens and, you know, writing instruments. There's, there's Mr. Grill again. Uh, the gun is made from a um, a lighter, you know, one of those long lighters that you'd use, like in a in a fireplace. And there were quite a lot of creatures 
I put together for this particular invasion. Uh, the one on the top there is actually um, uh, full of cigarette butts and, and the legs are made out of cigarette lighters. There's one in the water there. Moving along. That's the cigarette butt one. Uh, these two are brothers. They joined up together. Coming up out of the water. There you can see that the uh, all the butts and the the Bic lighter and so forth. And surprisingly, I don't find much of this stuff. I mean, when I was younger, that was the kind of thing. You go to the beach and you get disgusted because you'd see cigarette butts and everything. It's not the big problem that it used to be. To me, the, the plastic that you see today is much, much more of a problem than cigarettes are. And here they come. Um, this one, I think, I think I named him uh, Hannibal, like um, the Hannibal who rode the uh, elephant over the Alps here. Coming down. <laughs> this guy here, th this cone, I have no idea what that is. It's got a really unique texture to it, and I find them, you know, occasionally. There's a lot of stuff like that that I just don't know what it is. What? Cardboard. No, it's plastic. Um, but uh, it's a very distinct shape, and I have no idea what it is. When I find more than you know one of something, and and I, I can't identify it. I get very curious about it. Yeah? I don't know if that's it, but they what if it's be part of a firework shell? It, it might be part of a firework shell. I do find a lot of firework stuff on there. Um, I don't know if I, I have another one I found. Let me find. Here he is at the end of the day, my, my elephant guy. Uh, this guy originally started out as a comment box. And that's why I put the uh, the pens in it and everything, and there's the, the hole in the top so people could put notes in it um, about the about the exhibit. Yeah, this happened <laughs> um, because of you know the way I do this stuff. I'm often out on the beach and I have to lie down. Um, you know, get really close to it, and because you know, I I have bad knees. I'm not getting up anytime quick. So once I'm down there, I'm down there for a while. And it got to the point this summer where, um, um, you know, my neighbor finally said to me, he said, you know, Kathy, I kept hearing reports of a of a dead person on the beach, <laughs> and you know, people kept finding dead people, and and every time it turned out it was you. <laughs> I was like. I felt really, really bad. One day I had, um, I was out there shooting and um, my one of my neighbors who lives two doors down from me, an older woman, um, apparently she had went and got this young fellow who lived across the street to come out because she was really sure that it was a dead person on the beach. And so she went and got this guy and brought him over and, you know, I, I was totally unaware of this and then, you know, I, I just heard this guy saying, you know, oh, it's just Kathy you know, and kind of walked away in a, in a huff. Um, but yeah, I finally had to make a sign because it kept happening with, with more and more people. It's just saying, hey, I'm not dead, I'm making art, so don't, don't worry about me, I'm not, you know, I'm okay. But I'm thinking of turning this into a t-shirt too because I, I really love the saying, I'm not dead, I'm making art. Uh, it's a kind of a, an, so, those are your summer invasions, but just to let you know, the creatures, you know, and the and the and the marine debris, they're still out there in the winter too. So this is uh, this is from last winter, the ice invasion, and it just looks like you know, um, 
regular, you know, winter day out there. But if you look a little closer, you'll see some little shading on some of the um, the little iceberg things there. Uh, a couple of swans going by. And there are the creatures coming up out of the water. <coughs> Just kind of a reminder that this, this happens all year long. They're, they're not going away. They're plastic. They're not going away. They're made to look like metal. A lot of people think, think that, you know, I welded these together or something. No, it's just a special painting technique that I created. And don't ask me what it is, because if I told you, I'd have to kill you. But, you know, it's my own proprietary technique. So here they are coming up onto the ice flows. This one actually has a little uh, Christmas decoration for an arm, for a leg there. A little party popper leg. And this other one. Oh, this one is interesting. He was the first one to go to the uh, the AOP, the Angry Ocean Project Hospital, and you see the uh, yeah, also known as my kitchen. Um, you see the legs on the on the right there, the uh, on on the left. Sorry, uh, the two legs together, and there. Um, those were to replace another leg that had broken off. So the theory is if, if they have to uh, go to the uh, AOP hospital, we don't just make them, you know, better. We make them, I mean, make them whole. We, we make them better. Kind of like the $6 billion man, you know. Well, if, if they need to come back, I'm, uh, they're going to get some definite improvements on them. And here they are in the ice. Basically, I spend the winter making the creatures, and then uh, usually the summer is photographing them. Although it's starting to be a pretty warm fall. I may get out there again and do some more. We'll see. Uh, that piece there that makes the face, I have no idea what that's from. It's just a piece I've you know, picked up. And of course, that's a big bottle that's got run over. That's my curse. I'll pick up something like that and say, I can do something like that. I see a face in there. <laughs> and the swan's going by. And we're almost at the end here, folks. Rawr. There they are. So the question is, you know, where should they invade next? I'm open to suggestions on this. And um, I asked this, uh, like I said, I showed this to some elementary kids, and they were full of ideas for me. One of the first was Salem Willows, because they thought that was a trashy place. Um, <laughs> one kid said I should do his house. <laughs> one girl said, the mall, <laughs> okay. Um, and one kid said, I think you should come back and do it here at the school because we've done such a good job of cleaning up the school. We don't have any trash here like that anymore. And it was just so good to hear something like that from a little kid. And, the, and also the way he talked, he said, your next chapter should be about, I was like, okay. Um, and so that's it. Um, so I'm open to any questions if anybody wants, and if not, um, I'm also going to send you all home with a piece of, uh, can you turn the lights on? Awesome. Your own piece of marine debris. Right Thank you. This is what I have. This is, you know, your, your typical all kinds of stuff. But I wasn't done, but okay. <laughs> um, so I want everybody to go home with a piece, you know, maybe not such a big one, and keep it in your pocket for like seven days. And think about it. Every time you buy something, every time you pick up something that's plastic, where's it going to end up? Every time you see something on the street, a little piece of plastic, any kind of debris in the street, 
Where's it going to end up? Just keep it in your pocket for seven days and see what happens. So I'm going to pass that around before you go. And I just want to briefly show you some of the creatures in, uh, in, in real life here. Um, can you see this? This is Digger. what I do, I pack them up in a um, uh, picnic basket, oh, here he goes. Hannibal, uh, this one you didn't see, this one has uh, a little toy uh, fish in there with some fishing line caught in the net. This is the one from the trash can invasion, this little guy here. <coughs> Condoms and champagne. <laughs> this guy is, is actually one of my favorites. He's very cool. I call him the old man of the sea, and in some of the photographs, depending on how I hold him, he actually looks like he has a face profile, like a little nose here. And it's just very cool. It was very accidental. It wasn't planned. I, I saw it in a photograph. I said, oh, I didn't even plan to do that. Uh, this is Grill. This is the one with the pacifier, also one. Looks good on camera every time. Oh, and I wanted to mention that too. The, the, the way I filmed all these was um, not with a camera, uh, but on not even a good phone camera, but my old LG phone that, you know, has like five megapixels, which makes it really hard to blow anything up or whatever. But that's how I did this all on a very cheap little, little phone. Yes, you're, you're surprised. I was right? actually going to ask that question. What what was your uh, photographic technique? <laughs> that was it. An LG phone. All right. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, this, is, this is Scully. I ask, what made you want to use your old phone instead of an actual camera? I don't have an actual camera. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, no, I just recently upgraded, and I, I now own a, a Samsung uh, Galaxy S5, whatever it is, because it's waterproof and sandproof and has 16 megapixels, but I still don't own a camera. And the last one here is this, um, this little guy. Horseshoe crab, spider legs, the little army guys. I get one of those for Christmas. <laughs> and um, gunshot shells in the back there. Now I'm done. <laughs> Unless there's any other questions. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. No questions? Yes? Patrick, did you have any other questions? You, just you actually it? answered it before I asked it about the uh, <laughs> about your pho photographic technique. Yes. Yeah. I was actually wondering that because uh, you get a lot of different angles, and I wondered what you use for a camera. Like the phone, that's awesome. You just get in close. <laughs> the closer you can get in, the better. And uh, uh, yeah. It's most most of this trash is from the beach, um, the Beverly Beach, right? Or trash finds or. Uh, it's basically where I take the dogs. So it would be the okay. Beverly Beach, the Wingashik Beach, and uh, Manchester, Singing Beach. Those would be the three places that I hit. Do you ever get curious to sort of take, take, a, take a road trip and see if you... Do you ever get curious about different kinds of trash? Sadly, there's probably plastic everywhere, but... There is plastic everywhere. I get more curious about the different creatures because, you know, that's part of it is that the different shells and everything that I use. And where I am, you can look right across the harbor to um, the Salem Willows Beach and Dead Horse Beach and all that. 
And I see it all the time, so, you know, it got me curious one day. I thought, I wonder what they have over there. And, like, the, um, the spider crab shells, uh, the little ones I was talking about that are all, you know, that um, look really textured and everything, in the fall I was seeing a lot of those on my beach. So I went over there to Salem, and I was not finding any. So it's a whole different environment just across the harbor. It really can be very, very different. Um, so I tend to be more aware of that. The trash, I think my beach gets a, a particularly a lot of trash because I'm down river of the Danvers River. So everything from the river comes right down and it kind of swirls around in Salem Sound in there. It's almost like it's been described as a toilet bowl. You know, the water gets in there and it just kind of goes around and around before it actually gets out to sea or comes ashore. Um, so I get a little bit more even than Independence Park, which is, you know, very close to my beach. But, you know, it'll all end up on my beach just because of the geography of it. So yay for me. I'm in a spot that has, you know, lots of artist supplies or, you know, trash, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, but basically the best times to go are after a storm. And that's when I see a lot of stuff. And that's when I'll go up particularly looking for something like... Um, those escape hatches from the uh, from the lobster traps because those are um, those are really cool and I like those I like making frames out of those. Um, hey Ethan, can you bring up um, those one of those shadow boxes because I'd love to show that on the on the thing there. Um, so yeah, so basically I, I take the stuff and I and I photograph them, but I also do things like this. I have the creatures and then I also have um, shadow boxes with the creatures in them, which is just a kind of a different way to display them. Uh, but yeah, but one of my goals is really was to be to, uh, to do this up and down the coast. Like to, you know, go from, from Maine down to DC or whatever and take local trash and make creatures and then just, you know, kind of do invasions down there where people can recognize it and just let people know more and more about it. Because it's a continual problem and um, it's not going away anytime soon. Is this like a, compared to the trash that I see that you've collected, this is pretty minimal for the creature, creating, creating the creatures. So I was wondering uh, by chance if you were going to expand like and make the creatures bigger with more I hear that a lot. Are you going to make bigger creatures? Are you going to make bigger creatures? so much garbage. I mean, this is, I love the scale. Of yeah. The, even the, the shadow box and the little nip. Yep. The creatures are, like, adorable. <laughs> They're not big. supposed to be adorable. They're supposed to be scary. Well, they're scary, but um, the, I find scary adorable sometimes. But they, I, like, you have so much trash, and then these are on a smaller scale, which I love. Yep. But it's almost like the idea of, like you said, it's never going away, and it's more and more and more. So I, it's almost like it's like a movie that they'll like take over. Like oh, this one, like as big as this movie. If I knew how to animate it's them and make them move, that would be that would be cool. I keep waiting to meet the person who could teach me, tell me how to animate them and make them move. Um, that would be really cool. But yeah, making big ones that is something that I, I it is a goal, and I still kind of in the sitting in my head process, I think it's like the first time I was making a creature, it took me a year to figure out how to actually do it. And I'm, I've, I've got this couple of big barrels that I've dragged home. Maybe an old kayak or something. <laughs> I get two big barrels, yeah. Um, and I do want to do that, but, it has, but part of it is, well, what do I use for the natural piece? Um, because that's a much smaller scale. How do, how do I make that? How do I, because I want to incorporate something natural in it. So how do I do that? So that's part of it that's kind of going around in my head. But actually the next big project that I'm working on, and, and this is my daughter's idea, um, because I keep finding so many needles on the beach, I'm going to do something with that. And that's, I'm going to plan that out for next summer where um, I'm not sure exactly what it's going to look like, but that's the next big one that's going to be. It's going to include all of the needles that I keep finding. Finding six in one day, that's, that's ridiculous, you know. Um, so that's the next thing with that. Yeah, who knows? You never know where, the, where you're going next with something, but that's what I do. Thank you. <laughs>